let's talk about choosing fabrics because if you know a little bit about how to choose fabrics then you can make them do the majority of the work for you which is always a good thing so let's uh, look at some examples here it's perfectly fine to buy a pre-printed fabric of a koi or a little goldfish and use that in your work but what I tend to do is look for them in terms of what other possibilities they actually have because I like to make my own critters with their own expressions and their own postures so in this little fish you'll notice this interesting pattern here that could become a tile house a tile roof on a house could become a cobblestone walkway it can become the little feathers on the breast of a small little bird when batiks work well in pictorial work but what my students often do is they're trying to pick the area of the batik that has the most similar look to it the most similar color and shading actually what you want batiks to do for you is have those natural highlights and shadows so if you're trying to make a little rock area and the top of the rock is lighter as you go around the edge and underneath the rock it's darker then this is the perfect batik for you and you just cut it off so that it makes that rock for you and does some of that work for you using the the natural part of the batik that has that in it I made a Red Rock Country quilt with those beautiful, um, vivid red rocks that you find in Utah. And I got really lucky and found this wonderful rock fabric. And it worked great for all the rocks in the foreground because your foreground colors need to be richer in color, much more vivid, saturated colors. So the, this print worked great in the foreground. But any time that you are trying to go back and back and back in your composition and create some depth and perspective, everything in terms of color and value gets muted, muted, muted down. That's how you create distance and uh, perspective in your work. So unfortunately, I was not as lucky in trying to find a print that was in that same color family, but not that rich, saturated color. Many times, you can just simply flip the fabric, if it's a good quality fabric, and you can use the back side of that fabric to do the work for you. In this case, this print flipped beautifully. It's those same color families, same kind of shading and, and print, but it's much, much more muted down. So look for good quality fabrics that have the ability to flip for you. When I go to the fabric store and look at prints, like this print, what you mostly are going to see is just the metallic that shows up in this print. But if you flip it over, you will see, lu la la, now I have water. Lots of possibilities of water there. So in my exhibition quilts, probably a good quarter of the fabrics found in, within that quilt are actually the reverse side or the wrong side of the fabric. And if you look in your stash at home and start flipping those fabrics, you might find that you can practically double your stash with what's on the back side of a print. This fabric I call a transition fabric. This kind of fabric I might even buy more than a quarter of a yard of. This one has the possibilities of getting you from a bush to the side of the water. And it's those transition areas that are sometimes very difficult. So this kind of fabric works really well. Look for transitional fabrics. This fabric, I was so excited about when I found this fabric. Look at those cute little elephants. Has that perfect little uh, small scale grasses that can be tucked in here and there and everywhere. But what I was so excited about when I saw this print was the elephant's butts. Because if you just chop that off right there, now you have a rock. And then you can just make yourself so excited and so happy because you're making rock with elephant butts and nobody else might know that but you. But it can keep you amused for uh, many, many hours as you're making lots and lots of rocks. And I make lots of rocks in my work. 
So let's go back to our panda quilt because it's a wonderful example of using lots of different uh, fabrics. So we're going to start in our foreground here with this rhododendron bush. Anytime you're in the foreground, which means you're right close to something, you can have very detailed prints. And in this case, it was a printed uh, foliage fabric, printed leaf fabric. I cut it all apart and reassembled it in the shape and positions that I wanted my rhododendron bush to be in. But you can use those, you know, leaf prints. You can use those uh, full-scale petal sorts of fabric. Bright, uh, saturated colors here. And your, your warm colors, your reds, your yellows, and your oranges, are always going to come forward in your composition. Whether you want them to or not, they will leap forward. All of your greens and blues and violets, naturally, the cool colors naturally receive the